to have all of you here this Sunday morning. We give a, a thank you to Jane for coming and helping out with the duet there uh, from, from Right Folk Floral this morning. She told me she was going to be both services with me today. I appreciate that very much. Uh, warm welcome to all who are here, all who are online, all means all here. Switch mics. Is this not working? Okay. All right. We'll try this. Okay. <laughs> All are welcome here. <laughs> no matter what you have been through or how God made you, you are welcome and affirmed, and we are glad that you are here. Just want to let you know a few announcements. This evening at 6 p.m., we are having a blue Christmas service. Now, that is what that means. It's not a Elvis service. What that means is that uh, if you have lost someone in the last year or lost someone around Christmas time. A lot of times it's hard uh, regardless or if there's estrangement and challenge within the family. Sometimes it is hard uh, at Christmas time when everybody is joyous to recognize the places which are not joyous for you. So this is a service uh, inclined towards that uh, location. So if you, if you would feel called to come, you're welcome to come, whether or not you've had loss in this last year. Or if you know of someone who this might be a meaningful service for, I invite you to uh, invite them to come uh, tonight. Also, Christmas Eve is already upon us. So know that on Christmas Eve, we'll be having a service here at 4 p.m. and a service at Bright Hope Floral at 7 p.m. So you are welcome to go to whichever service fits better with your holiday schedule. So uh, come to one or the other and celebrate with us on this, this joyous season, this joyous time of the celebration of Christ anew in the world. Are there other announcements? Oh yes, Ann told me she has announcements for us. Coordinate all the good doing going on. I will speak really loudly so I don't have to go up front, but um, you may have seen, particularly in the newsletter, and thank you Mary Lou for that continued ministry, um, but this Sunday there is a special offering from the Western North Carolina Conference of the United Methodist Church. That offering uh, will benefit those who uh, were devastated by the recent tornadoes uh, across multiple states, even as close as Kentucky and Tennessee. Um, it is an offering that uh, all you need to do is just mark the envelope uh, tornado relief or something of that nature, um, and it will go to our conference and go directly uh, to those communities, um, many of whom are without churches this morning, um, but still uh, celebrating the season outdoors and doing it together. So uh, if you'd like to do that, it will go to the conference and then go to those areas. So thank you. Thank you, Keith. It is an advantage being a guy when you're making an announcement without a microphone, I must say. Your voice carries well. 
<laughs> are, are there any other announcements for the good of the congrega congregation? Then let us rise for the call to worship down in the bulletin. <coughs> Our souls proclaim your greatness, O God. And our spirits rejoice in you. We will praise you as long as we live. We will sing praises to you our whole lives long. We will not trust in the powerful of this world. But we will trust in you, creator of heaven and earth. The one who gives food to the hungry. The one who enacts justice for the oppressed. Our souls proclaim your greatness, O God, as we worship you in this place. Let us remain standing and join in singing our hymn, hymn 179, O Sing a Song of Bethlehem, stanzas 1 through 3. minister who really mentored me in the first part of my ministry and whom I love a great deal. So um, really grateful he's doing well, but I will ask for, for prayers uh, for continued healing for, for Mike. It is 
not an easy journey. Even though, yeah, it's only second degree, they're very painful. Uh, so prayers for as he continues to, to heal in this joyous and challenging season now for them. Uh, and John is still recovering well. Any update there? Okay. He, he, we were playing cards the other day, and he just gets tired. He's, he's doing really well. That's fantastic. I'm glad. Glad, glad to hear that. Um, we're, Sarah is still, she uh, is weak from treatment, so we'll keep praying for her as she's working through that, that cancer treatment. Are there other, uh, oh yeah, I wanted to let you know too that Linda has moved to um, a place in Winston, right? Greensboro. 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 Somewhere around there. Uh, <coughs> Greensboro. So, uh, so prayers for her where she is now and um, it is, I'm sure it is a very good place and safe place for her to be. But, but prayers for her. Yes, Tammy. Prayers for my sister-in-law, Linda, who, you know, I just lost my brother. And then the other day she was rushed to the hospital for appendicitis. And, of course, she's trying to do way more than she needs to be doing. So prayers for her to keep her healthy. And this first season without her husband. It, it is a hard, you know, so we hold up Linda, it not wants to hold up all folks that have lost people in this last year. The first Christmas is always a hard time with loss, and there's been a lot of loss in, in our country. A lot of folks that died in those tornadoes that came through um, in destruction. So many prayers for, for all those that are there. Prayers continue a little for, for healthcare workers as Omicron has ramped up in many places in the world and has not yet here, but people are worn out. So, so many, many prayers for those working in South Africa, all around the world, as they work to try to heal people, that God will keep them strong in it. Are there other prayer concerns or celebrations for us? Then let us be in an attitude of prayer. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for all the ways that your spirit is in and through us for this sacred season as we prepare for Christ in you. We give you thanks for <laughs> celebrations and times of joy. We give you thanks for all the ways that your incarnation continues to live in the world. And Lord, we hold up to you for your healing this day. All those who have lost in this last year, all those who are mourning, all those who've lost in, in <coughs> lives and homes in the, hurt, in the tornadoes, we hold up to you, Linda, especially for healing in this season. We look to you, Mike and Tommy, Sarah, Chuck, Luke, Frida, Linda, Jean, Ruth, Alan, and all those concerns that were not mentioned aloud, Lord, you know the needs of our hearts, and we lift them to you. We ask all these things in your Son's name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now it's time for our journey to Bethlehem. We have another young helper for us today.
See, I can tell them I do. That's okay, because the children of all ages. It's not a problem. Hi! I got about some characters here for us to add to our scene up there. Let me show you the scene we already have. You like the sheep the best? Oh my gosh, you are a person after my daughter's heart. Donkey is her favorite. See the donkey up there? That was, that was Mary. She rode in, well, it's not in the Bible, but it's, it's, everyone always sees Mary on the donkey there coming all the way to Bethlehem. And they had to stay where the animals were. So we have a cow. So we're building up our story. Sometimes cows have horns. So I'm not sure if it was a bull or, bull or a cow. I just made a guess it was a cow. Yeah. So it depends on the breed of cow. Or bovine, whatever. Um, so for this time, we're going to set up some of the story here. And you like the sheep the best sheep up here. So what happened where there's these sheep in the field let's put them right there. And the sheep in the field were being watched by, who's that? What do you think? A sheep watcher. Otherwise known as a shepherd. So he's out there listening, taking care, he's out there taking care of the sheep and then comes up and who's that? There's an angel. What do you think he said when he saw when they saw angels? They were scared. We only know that because the first thing that angel always says is, you know, "Don't be afraid." And then they said, "We got something exciting to tell you." I'm jumping ahead a little bit in the story. This is a Christmas part of Christmas Eve story. I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but she's there to tell them that Jesus had been born, even though we don't have Jesus here yet. We're gonna wait for Christmas Eve for that. And she's telling them that they can go close by and find in, in this manger, in this place where animals were kept, they can find the newborn king. So the shepherds come in to hurry to try to find Jesus. We'll move, we'll move him a little closer on Christmas Eve, but we want to get him set up there. So he's getting ready for the story for the birth. Is there lots of stuff to do to get ready for Christmas? Have you helped doing any decorating? Yeah, that's things we do to get ready now. Maybe when you get a little closer, there's food your mom might be making, or your dad, or you might help. And then there's gifts. Have you wrapped any gifts? Anybody? Getting stuff ready? No. Well, sometimes there's things like that. But we're getting ready to celebrate Jesus getting born here. The next thing we have are these guys over here. And these guys are wise men, magi, and they are journeying. They're following a star. They've got a long way to go. So we need to move them along the journey. Will you help me move them along on the journey? You come get one of a couple of them, guys? Well, actually, we'll put your dad to work, because we have three. So here we go. So we're going to walk them along on their journey. They keep going. They're trying to get there. Let's see if they get this far now. Because they had a journey for a very long time. Okay, thank you so much for helping me.
Sometimes when we are trying something new, or when we are facing a difficult decision, or when we want to celebrate something, or when we just feel lost and alone and uncertain about life, the universe, and everything, we need a blessing. We don't always think of it that way or word it like that. We say we need advice or support or companions or someone to come along beside and lift us again so we can see more than the tops of our shoes. We seek a blessing. <clears throat> For many of us, we go back home. We ask our mom, we talk to our dad, our family, close friends, those we grew up with, and those who know us best. We want them alongside us. We want them to be in our presence. Somehow, we know that being there, being back home, will make everything better. Maybe it won't be fixed or solved or wished away, but at least we won't be alone. We seek a blessing. Throughout the history of the Bible, many people have sought blessings. Mary, faced with an incomprehensible burden and an unexpected gift, ran to Cousin Elizabeth's house, looking for someone who knew a little of what she was going through, looking for a place to hide until the reality of her condition could become something real. And she received a blessing. The prophet Micah had spoke of a blessing coming from an unexpected place, from an unassuming town. Yet by God's grace would it become the means through which he would bless the whole world. Bethlehem, that little town of blessing, was that place. We all seek a blessing. We light these candles, the candle of hope, of peace, of joy, and of today, love, as a sign that we know blessing and we know waiting for blessing to be felt and lived. We light these candles as a sign of blessing.
Luke's gospel begins with a miraculous birth. Hot take there, preacher. Yeah, yeah, but actually, I'm not talking about Jesus. I'm talking about John the Baptist. And if you knew that, extra bonus points for you. That is the first miraculous uh, birth that begins there. The story of two elder, uh, an elder couple who had not had children, who were gifted with this child that would be John the Baptist. And then we have Mary come into the story, and Mary in a tough place of, of what to do, and she reaches out for help to her relative, Elizabeth. So we hear now the story beginning in Luke 1, starting verse 39 through 55, and this is from the CEB version. Hear now the word. Mary got up and hurried to a city in the Judean highlands. She entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. With a loud voice, she blurted out, God has blessed you above all women. And he has blessed the child you carry. Why do I have this honor that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as I heard your greeting, the baby in my womb jumped for joy. Happy is she who believed the Lord would fulfill the promises he made to her. Mary said, with all my heart, I glorify the Lord and the depths of who I am. I rejoice in God, my Savior. He has looked with favor on the low status of his servant. Look, from now on, everyone will consider me highly favored because the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. He shows mercy to everyone from generation, one generation to the next, who honors him as God. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered those with arrogant thoughts and proud inclinations. He has pulled the powerful down from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty-handed. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel, remembering his mercy, just as he promised to our ancestors, to Abraham and to Abraham's descendants, forever. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable unto you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Theotokos. Maybe you saw the title of the sermon in the bulletin and thought, that's Greek to me. If so, well done. That, that is Greek. It is a word that comes to us from the, the earliest uh, of the church traditions, the Orthodox Church. Okay, now I'm going to have my Catholics arguing with me about that. They're both really early, but, uh, but I would say the history would lead towards the Orthodox being first. Nonetheless, the earliest parts, both the
the Catholic and the Orthodox. They, they are people who revere a great deal, venerate the location of Mary. Mary as Theotokos, which is God bearer. Now, it makes sense because she bore within her body the child that was Jesus. She physically brought into the world God. It, it's actually kind of interesting that in the Protestant sections of the church, we don't put any more emphasis on Mary that we, that we do. Now, maybe she was mostly a, a, a passive vessel, you think, so there isn't that big of a deal. It's really what God did in creating Jesus. Well, sure, but Mary has a place. Mary said yes to what God wanted to do. Now, it's not so much a direct yes in the scriptures, but there is an affirmation when the angel comes in Matthew's gospel to announce what will become of her. And she does respond. She does accept what God will do. And I do think that's an important part of the story, that Mary agreed to be this bearer of God. Because this was not a job that was out without risk for her, great risk for her personally. She, uh, in the, as Matthew Gospel said, tells us that she was looked to be put away quietly by, by the good Joseph. But still, that's her livelihood, her life changed forever, a embarrassment to her family. One who would be degraded. A life of poverty, undoubtedly. Lessened opportunities. Challenge, embarrassment. She risked all these things to say yes to what God was asking her. And we see in this response her her joy, her recognition in what was great and good that she was able to do. Now maybe any of you think, well yes, of course, I would say yes to what God wanted to do in my life. But it's easy to see from this side what it was. I think it was harder for Mary to see. And she still said yes. She bore Jesus into the world, a flesh of her flesh, her literal flesh creating that which became Jesus. He was carried in the waters of her womb. He was fed and strengthened by her body, both before birth and after birth. I have to tell you, there was a point when I looked at Zoe when she was about six months old before she had had any other food, and I looked at her at, other than what I provided, and I looked at her and thought, I did that. I, I didn't do that alone. But the strength of my body grew and created and gave the strength for this miracle to grow, to be. And it is the most powerful feeling I've ever had in my life to be aware of that. And I know many other mothers can agree with that feeling, can connect to it. Mary's body brought forth God into the world to strengthen to grow an aspect of God in Jesus. One that would change things. One that would change everything, really. It is a powerful role, this Theotokos, this God-bearer. She went to see Elizabeth, an, an, an older relative, and one that she could trust that would have God within her, and she was not disappointed. 
John the Baptist is said to have leaped with joy. That must have been some kick that she felt when, when she heard Mary's voice. She knew something special was happening, and she celebrated with Mary. Now this is all well and good. It happened a very long time ago. We celebrate these things of Christmas every year, like Jesus is getting born and new, even though we know, well, it has already all happened. And maybe there seems like there's really nothing different about this Christmas compared to all the previous where we celebrated this event. And maybe there isn't. But maybe there can be. I think the opportunity that Christmas gives us, honestly, is an opportunity we have all the year long. It's an opportunity to be God bearers ourselves. Not in the way that Mary was, but in a way that is real, embodied, God's essence within our own flesh, bringing forth something good, some of God in the world. It is a sacred opportunity that we are given, that we have an opportunity to say yes to now. And maybe you've said yes to this in the past. You get a chance to renew, to say yes again. You have an opportunity to have God work within you in a new way. Now maybe that doesn't seem that realistic that it, that much could change. But I would say the miracle of Christmas can, op can give us an opportunity for something new to happen in our lives. If we say yes to the opportunity for God to be in us in a new way. To offer us healing for the wounds of our past. To offer us healings from the fear that would hold us back. To offer us the feeling of empowerment. That we could have a word to say of grace. For those who are in need. The opportunity to give. So as Mary's song of Magnificat to, to offer to give to those who are in need, to feed those who are hungry, to fight for justice for those who are oppressed. There is need in our world. And there is an offer that we might embody that which God would have us do. Many of us went last week to the, the Christmas gathering where we watched a, a, a Christmas carol at Sart. And even if you didn't, my guess is you're familiar with the story. And I, I actually, after having watched that, I went and, and listened to the book again because I think it's a good Christmas tradition. I'm going to keep up every year because it is a great story, and while it is not canon from the Bible, it feels like it's Christmas canon to me. It is a great story. It's a radical story. But really, it is this concept that what it means to live a Christian life, a life with Christmas at its core, is not about professions or church services but about living out a life of generosity. Generosity of Scrooge had many, many goods to give, but also a generosity of spirit, of kindness, of not being so closed off and afraid of what the world, or angry at what the world didn't give him, but being living in a way where his direction was changed to give, to reach out, it's a good Christmas message. Be Scrooges. Now, nobody likes that message. Like, no. Scrooge from the end of the story. Be Scrooges. One who can live where 
Christmas is in our hearts all year round, which is that embodiment of caring for God's people in the world. The hard work of noticing when someone else is hurting, when we're all so busy and stressed with our own lives. <coughs> the art of giving and caring for others versus being fearful of what we have for ourselves, that, that, is, that is a hard step to live with that kind of generosity for many people, to live with that kind of generosity. The ability to humble ourselves when we're being proud, which can also be a challenge as you're thinking about the family gatherings with lots of external family that you might be facing this coming week. You might really connect to that idea of the fact that uh, Jesus didn't say they'll know we are Christians by how right we are, but by how we love. And we like being right. <laughs> it's not really our calling. Calling is to, to love, to have so much of that spirit that we are truly embodying, carrying forth the anathiotokos in the world. Because, my friends, the world needs it. The world needs what this symbolizes for us the hope the peace, the joy, and the love. <coughs> we need to be reminded of it. We need this Christmas to be a time where we can be reminded of it. Imagine what it would be if you saw a wave of this spirit across our country. Just imagine how miraculous that could be. Where we can see that love is more important than being right. Where we could find some peace within ourselves and with people that we disagree with on ideas. Find joy in the connection. To spread love. Can you find in your place a place of hope without happening? Let us be bearers of the miraculous part of Christmas. The love that God would spread through you. Let us pray. <clears throat> Gracious and loving God, Lord, we are guilty at times of forgetting that we are to bear your word through our actions. We are guilty at times of, of worrying about our pride, of holding up, trying to be right, over-loving. We are guilty at times of fear getting in the way of your calling. We're guilty at times of selfishness. Lord, we invite that your light, the light of the world, into us now. Give us the courage to do so. That it might enlighten in us the places where we need your perfecting love in our spirit. Give us the hope that your actions can heal us. Lord, in silence, we lift to you those things that we have done and left undone that have fallen short of your great calling. Let your light shine within us that we might know your healing and grace. the
Christmas light. Hope, peace, joy, and love shine within you. That you might know the grace that Christ offers. That you might bear the light of the world. In Christ's name we pray. God of hope, peace, joy, and love comes to you now. The light of Christ shine within you and through you. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven and made new. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven and made new. Thanks be to God. Since I know you guys are all generous Scrooges, I'm going to say thanks for what folks have given they're online and here. And we want to rise and join in the doxology as we celebrate those gifts. <laughs> follow out the light of Christ. That is the tradition in, in our church, in, in many, many churches. And it's symbolism. 
is for us to always remember that we are to be bearers of the light of Christ. That is our job. The job of the worship service is just to remind us of that light, to reconnect us to the light, and our worship is our lives that we carry this light, light forth into. Go in the peace and power. Go in the light and love. Go to show a world in darkness the light of Christ. Go in peace.